Installing a hydronic heater to survive Canada's winter wasn't just a luxury, it was a necessity. Our first heater, a Dickinson diesel, couldn't keep the staterooms warm, and with freezing temperatures closing in, we needed a better solution. After researching options, we chose an ITR Chinook hydronic system to heat the majority of our 78-foot yacht and give us hot water on demand. But as with any project on Tongaroa, things didn't go exactly as planned. Spring clamps. Oh, honey. You see that? What do you think? Did we make the right call or should we have done something different? Now when we first got Tongaroa and we needed heat, we installed the little Dickinson here. It was just so we could move on board. It wasn't meant to heat the whole boat. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we first moved on board, we would set up a mattress in the main salon on the weekends because uh, we were working full-time jobs. And this was just so we could live on board in the winter time on the weekends. We needed something big to heat the rest of the boat. So we started digging into a few different options. There were the, you know, the Wabastos, the S-Bars, which are all good heaters. What we ended up settling on was the ITR Chinook heater. Uh, and the reason, be, the reason why we went that way is because not only did it have a pretty massive BTU capacity, it also does on-demand hot water. Um, the original hot water tank on the boat was a 110 volt heater or 230 volt heater, which many boats use. But it's not ideal because you, you have to be running that off of either your battery bank or a generator on inverters. So it's, it's just, in my opinion, not a feasible option. So, being we have lots of diesel uh, on board for powering the heaters, on-demand diesel heater was the way to go. The ITR Chinook is a 50,000 BTU heater, which is a fairly substantial amount of heat that it produces. Uh, I think it's pretty high in the range of typical marine heaters. It burns about six and a half gallons per hour. Now when I say that, it's only burning that amount when the burner is physically active. And as you can see behind me right now, it, it's not. It depends on how much your heat demand is. So if we had every single heater on the boat going, had hot water running, it would obviously go through considerable amount of heat. Usually it's just Izzy using it, and usually it's only when she's getting ready for school in the morning or in the evening after she's had a shower and she just wants to warm up. It's, it's pretty minimal otherwise. Um, I've never really calculated how much we burn per day, uh, but it's, it's reasonable. Hurricane Chinook is set up for one primary heating loop, and when I say a loop, that means that there's a single pump inside the unit, and it pumps through one continuous loop back to the heater unit. Now, we had only originally configured this to heat the master and the, the guest state rooms in the rear, nothing else. So we had our one rear loop. Now, at that point, we had Josh on board, um, our son Josh, and this was his gaming area. So this is up in the front of the boat. This would be the crew settee, and it gets pretty cold up here because this is completely blown apart up in the bow. This is no insulation up here, so it gets cold in this area. So we had to break a second loop off of that. And like I said, the heater's not set up for that. So I had to kind of custom configure a few things. So we ran a loop up to the front of the boat so we could get heat for Josh up here. What are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to look into how to plumb the second loop on the hurricane heater. Two loops. Two loops? Mm -hmm. What? Half loop and front loop. And they're going to be separate loops on the hurricane heater. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to be so nice. Mm -hmm. So we only have to heat the back, we don't have to heat the front at the same time? Correct. So what I've had to do is add a couple of pumps in here to separate out the two flow for the front and the rear. So one of these pumps will do the rear loop, one of these pumps will do the front loop. Um, so what happens is that hot water gets circulated through the boat and then in each room there's a little heater uh, that the water flows through. It's got a fan on it. Um, so each individual room has its own heater unit, its own thermostat. So they're all individually ability or all are individually able to be set for whatever temperature uh, whoever likes. What's the exhaust there? Uh, that is <laughs> <laughs> that's another uh, custom exhaust that we've done. Um, it's a, it's a MagnaFlow muffler, so it's a car muffler on there, but it works really well for what we use it for. Um, we did a test fit and uh, built up our own gooseneck for the exhaust, and then uh, 
Sean at the shop welded it up for us, and he took it upon himself to put a shop logo on the side of it. <laughs> Carmina Performance. The Carmina Performance logo. Um, and then fabricated my own through hulls. Um, so that's a, an isolated through hull. I don't use the through hull for intake. I've got a separate intake tube on the far side there. Um, so the, the metal is just there to, to isolate the heat from the, the pipe coming through. Uh, stainless steel does a pretty good job of insulating heat. So, yeah. Love this heater. It also has an option to hook up 110 volt um, supplementary heating elements. So if you're at the dock, you can get a little bit extra heating off of it. It's pretty minimal, but um, as you can see, we, we've never bothered to hook it up yet. So Have we ran out of hot water before? Uh, nope, never ran out of hot water. Um, everything's been pretty good. And we've got, uh, so far, <laughs> which is pretty much just a little bit of hot water run this summer and the winter, we've got 1,234 hours of run time. So we're telling you guys about the actual individual heat units. Uh, this is what we have in each cabin. Uh, these are the smallest of the cabin fans from ITR. They're about an 8,000 BTU unit. They've got their own fan on them. They've got a thermostat built into them, so they'll only turn the fan on when they sense hot water flowing through. And uh, yeah, we've got two fittings here, one for water in, one for water out. And it's just uh, the loop goes through the whole boat. It'll go into one, out the other, and then off to the next heater. And same thing, in and out, until it loops back around to the heater. Do they again. run constantly? Uh, they don't, or they shouldn't. Um, these, like I said, they are thermostatically controlled with a standard wall thermostat. Um, provided the heat in the room is high enough, they will shut off and turn on throughout the day. Uh, one complaint that I have with these units is they're fairly noisy. Uh, these are for just a little computer cooling fan, they make a lot of noise. So it's uh, that's the, the one downfall of this system is the, the noise generation. So when you have that cycling on and off at night, it can be disruptive. So I'm looking into options for quieter fans right now, but otherwise that's what we use. So this will just show you what these units look like uh, when they're actually mounted. Uh, so we've got nice hot air coming out of them. Um, yeah, they're pretty simple. And we just use a standard household thermostat. And normally, normally they're mounted, but uh, unfortunately we're kind of in the middle of a refit, so we're not 100% sure if that's where it's going to stay. So that's where it is for now. Now, this hasn't been a 100% perfect unit. We've run into issues with it, and the issues that we have had are mainly around the pumps. Um, I have not been happy with the pumps that they use for the system. I've had, I'm pretty sure at this point, two, possibly three pump failures. Uh, so not, not super happy with that. But otherwise, it's been pretty good. Uh, it definitely supplies enough heat for the boat. And we're, we're pretty happy with how it's been so far. Okay, Blaine's having a little bit of a hissy fit. He's working on the hydronic heater because, again, Operation Heat Part 2 isn't quite done yet. And he's in this really tiny spot. And he is hating whoever put in what? Spring clamps. Oh, honey. You see that? Because they put these stupid spring clamps in here that don't come off easy. Wouldn't that be hurricane heater people? That would be hurricane heater people. Not impressed. Oh, spring clamps are stupid. Yes. Worst thing ever invented. So that's why you're having a hissy? Yes. That's why I'm having a hissy. I could hear I'm, you. I'm 20 minutes in and I'm already bleeding. I could hear you on the back of the boat. I imagine so. Uh, but what are you doing? Well, you have to compress this spring clamp while you try to pull it off because it's too small to fit that way and slide over the bottom. No, but why are you taking the spring clamps off? Because the brand new pump on the brand new heater doesn't work. Fudge. Yes. Fudge, Blaine. Yes. So. Did you phone Hurricane? Yep. And? Um, I phoned my supplier for the Hurricane and he's getting in touch with hurricane which i have not heard back from yet and for our last update after a couple of little issues with our hydronic heater system carl at nautical star marine helped us out huge and got us everything we needed to get it working perfectly as i said i split the loops into two loops one for the rear of the boat one for the front of the boat i also mentioned that we had pump problems so currently we have no front loop we had a pump failure so this front loop is disconnected I'm currently working on getting that reconnected again with a better pump like I did for the rear loop. But you can see why we need it up here. This is the, the pilot house and you can see just how fogged up the main windows are. And 
this was what we were battling on the way down from Alaska with the boat originally, because we had no heat in the boat then either. So we had space heaters sitting up on these countertops with fans blowing across the windows to try to keep this fog down. We actually have a big heater unit down under here for the hydronic system that's just waiting for hot water. So as soon as we have that hot water going, none of this will be an issue anymore. Obviously, there's a few things left to be done, but that'll come in a future video. If you liked this video, check out this one where we installed our first heater, a Dickinson diesel, and how it worked for us.